Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. Last week, we had Beth Ann Kozlovich of Kahi Mahala, who opened our eyes to mental illness in adolescence. It's amazing, it's not just here in Hawaii, it's all over the world. Do you realize, though, how many children are victims of abuse, divorce, have lost their parents, or their parents are incarcerated? Who takes care of them? Today, I wanted to focus on a model here in Hawaii called Kids Hurt Too. It's a model for the country and the world to assist children and help them to, trans to a transition point into a normal life. Kids Hurt Too Hawaii provides grieving children and youth aged from three to 17 years old a safe space to connect with others, to tell their stories and express their feelings of loss, fear, anguish, and confusion. I would like to introduce you to Michael Moore. Hello, Michael. And Hiro Ito of Kids Hurt Too. Now, Hiro, you have been here several times with me because you know my heart is with Kids Hurt Too. Mm -hmm. And even though I have many programs that I'm involved in mentoring young children, Kids Hurt Too is the closest thing to my heart because I know you help so many people. So thank, thank you. you for coming. Okay. And Michael, you are the new executive director who I just met a few weeks ago True. Uh, for Kids Hurt Too. And you have uh, a, a, an amazing amount of experience in all types of foundations to help kids. But I saw in you, and I see it in Hero, something that I don't see in a lot of people. That is a passion, a passion to help. So I'm going to open this up to you, and I'm going to ask you a question, Michael. Why did you choose Kids Hurt Too? Mm, that's a great question. Um, before I get to that, let me yeah. just say uh, we're really happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. Um, why did I choose Kids Hurt Too? Um, if I can make this brief, I, I didn't really choose Kids Hurt Too Hawaii. They chose me, and here's how. I worked next door for 10 years, and I became more and more familiar with the work that they did, and I was more and more intrigued as time went by because they served so many families, and they seemed to be very, very happy. I had no idea these were grieving children who had lost a parent or someone else in the family for any reason. Um, and uh, I was working at another organization, and I got a call and uh, was asked, would you like to become the executive director for Kids Here to Hawaii? And I said yes immediately. I uh, had one phone interview with one board member who I actually knew and was offered a contract before I even met any of the rest of the board. So I'm there because they came and found me, and I tell you, there's not a nonprofit in Hawaii that I'd rather be working for. Oh, I'd love to hear that, Michael. Not just because you're working there, but because I know how important it is to help these kids. Oh, yeah. We, uh, a lot of us that are in the outside world, and I'm using the word outside world, don't understand how many children suffer. How many children, little ones from one, two, three, four years old, what happens when their parents are in jail? Where do they go? Who can they rely on? Hiro, tell us a little bit about the programming. Okay, uh, Kids Hurt Too Hawaii has been in Hawaii 17 years, and then uh, uh, we provide services for all children who are grieving, uh, separation from parents or one of parents, or family members through death, divorce, parents are incarcerated, also uh, nowadays um, foster children and youth. They are all grieving, and uh, some of them, a lot of them are traumatized. So we just uh, provide peer support group for the children, and in teens, and also um, adults, the guardians, and parents. And then we just do the groups on a regular basis every month. And then also at the weekend uh, base, we have a different organization and work with uh, different events. And then some of them are surfing events, some of them are you know, ocean activities, some of them are beach making, some of them are ukulele, you know, music you know, events, and many, many events. But we do. And I think, uh, Hiro, from uh, my experience with you, besides you being an excellent ping pong player, because mm -hmm. you and I have had many of those, uh, you, you, have, you do more than just work here. You also go to Japan, don't you? Uh, that was uh, you know, after the tsunami. You know, we did like a four past five years. 
and then uh, at this moment, I'm fo my focus is uh, uh, in Hawaii. In Hawaii, children but, in Hawaii, but yes. you, you were able to help a lot of children around the world, right? Mm, Especially yes. in Japan, mm -hmm. because of what happened during that tsunami period. That's correct. It was really, really amazing. And I, I, I credit you and your wife, Cynthia, who mm -hmm. was the ED of a few years ago, and basically who started the program and got yes. it going. So I want everybody to know that you were there from the beginning, and I, I really appreciate everything that you do for these kids as well. Thank you so, so much. So, Michael, tell me, let's get back to the business side of this thing. Okay. How does Kids Hurt 2 function? What can we do to help Kids Hurt 2? How do they function? Oh, that's a broad question. Mm. I can answer in different ways. Um, if I can, just elaborate um, a little bit on the programming. I, th I think people don't understand just how unique the peer support groups are and the mentoring activities are that we do on the weekends and how they really contribute to the mission of the organization. Um, these grieving children, they're grieving from either loss of a parent or uh, and uh, victimization due to exposure to crime. And they break into age uh, similar groups, the little children, the lot bigger children, youth, and parents. And the work that they do in, their, in those groups is very, very healing. But that just still, it's just a really close, tight-knit group. It doesn't really expose them to the community mm -hmm. and to get them back out there and living their lives the way they might. So that's why the organization for years, and really under the leadership of HERO, has created all these partnerships with um, folks in the community to do the surfing or to do uh, bead making, jewelry yeah. making, gardening, all kinds of different things. So our families get exposed to other families and the kids get exposed to other kids, et cetera, and they build their own networks. It's all part of the healing process. I think that's wonderful, Michael, because when I go and I visit you guys and I see the different rooms that you have for mm -hmm. the different age-appropriate kids, and then I go downstairs to where you have Hawaii Rising going. Is it High Rising? High Rising. Uh, where High Rising is starting to, and we'll talk about that in the second half mm -hmm. of the show. I just see that the kids don't just have a place to go and to be, but they can start looking towards the future. That's correct. They can start looking at what can happen from here. And I know in my program with you, the You Are In Charge program we had, that program itself was to help them just transition into society, be able to go to school, go to work, do what has to be done. Right. But you're dealing with smaller kids, very, very young kids. All the way down to age three. All the way down to age yeah. three, oh my God. And how many are there? Um, on a given night, we can work with 45 total family members. So it could be 15 children, 15 youth, and 15 caregivers. Mm -hmm. And the caregivers, of course, could be the remaining parent, a foster parent, or some other um, legal guardian. Um, so that's the max we can do. Now we've started holding groups a minimum of two times a week, and that may actually go up, um, uh, being as how we've received new funding. Um, so our services have not really doubled, but we've right. definitely expanded in the last couple of months. Wonderful. Um, but still, these families stay with us for a year, maybe two years. So I don't want to. Uh, I want to make sure we're, you know, being clear. Um, we can serve anywhere up to. We're work, striving toward 300 families that would come in and work with us for a year. 300 families. Yeah, over wow. the course of a year, or maybe even more. And. It, and these, the families, and this is one thing that's really special in two ways, both from the business aspect, but also from the programmatic aspect, they can come as long as they want until they feel like they are in a place where um, they don't need us anymore, for example. But what I've learned in taking on this position is that these families keep coming back. These children that were seven are now back as 14-year-olds and or 16-year-olds and yep. volunteering. Mm -hmm. um, they keep coming back because it's a very safe environment, very friendly, very emotionally supportive. I mean, um, all of us have suffered losses, and I can't deny that coming on board as the executive director and seeing these families, I see their grief, but then I see their happiness. It also puts me in touch with the losses that I've experienced and reminds me of things that occurred back when I was a child. So. It's not just healing for the families, but it's beneficial um, for the personnel and the volunteers. So um, that's how we function on the programmatic side mostly. 
if you walk into the rooms, and especially if you come during dinner time and you see these families, you're going to be like me. You're going to go, I want to volunteer or I want to give you money. Mm -hmm. And that's how, how the agency That's is. how you guys got me with yeah. a volunteer. You walk in, you can't mm -hmm. help it. And that's part of the way the agency has functioned in the past. People come in and, and if they have some wealth or if they just want to give, they're like, I want to help. Can I give you some money or can I... Is there something I can do? Can I share some of my expertise with your kids or your youth? And we take advantage, not we take adva opportunity to bring those people in in various capacities to help out in the way that they can best. And um, I was so surprised within my first month. I mean, uh, the, I found checks for thousands of dollars from just independent people going, "Hey, thanks for what you do. Here's four grand. Here's five grand. Ten grand." Um, the money just comes from all over, and we have depended on that to keep the doors open. Um, now we are attempting to expand by using other funding sources, funding streams, including um, larger foundation uh, contracts. Um, uh, hopefully, we're hoping to get a contract with Aloha United Way uh, to support our efforts in high rising, which we can talk about later. And then we did just receive the Victims of Crime Act funding. Uh, under the Department of Justice through the AG's office, which is now allowing us to provide our families extra services for those who have, of any age, all the way up to the parents who have been exposed to crime. And there, like you mentioned in the intro, there are way too many no that are exposed yeah. to crime. So, so let's talk a little bit about, you have an event coming up, right? You have a, a major fundraiser. Oh, we do. And it's the third annual. Correct. And I was very lucky on the first year, right? Was I right. the first we one? Honor you. Yes, yes, I was honored year. in the first yes. year of, uh, of your fundraiser. And here it's your third year and you have 400 mm -hmm. people coming. And the thing that I want to tell everybody out there, you have no idea how wonderful it is to see these kids talk about what Kids Hurt 2 Hawaii does for them. And that's one of the one of the raison d'être that we have at Kids Hurt Too is the kids come back when they're a little bit older and they say, "This is how I got straightened out. This is what I needed. This is they. It, it was like a second home to me, if not the first home." So thank you to you guys for doing that. That's that's exactly why it's so important that we help your organization. Why people donate money to you. Mm -hmm. Why people, if they have expertise, like my expertise, mm -hmm. and we talked about that, Michael. You know, to try to help out the 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 older kids, the foster kids. Mm -hmm. Anything that people can do, they should at least have a look at kids or two. Come and visit. Mm -hmm. Make an appointment Absolutely. with you and have a look at the place. Come mm -hmm. and see those kids in the evening, and your heart will open and your wallet. They will open because because it really is such a wonderful, wonderful way to help kids get through a very, very difficult time mm -hmm. in their life. So you guys are doing great. We want to show some pictures, can we? Absolutely. All right, Robert, if you can pull them up. Go ahead. Hero, who is this? This, uh, uh, what, what's their name again? Um, oh, uh, Hero on the left. Yes, I'm on the <laughs> left. screen. Yes, I'm smiling. And Anjali in the middle. Yes. And Lila. And, and they are? They are, uh, you know, the one of them, you know, far right, she used to come to the kids up to Hawaii when she was young. She lost, you know, uh, her mother died. Uh -huh. And then uh, 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 Lila, yeah. she's a friend of her. Then uh, they right. come to uh, uh, kids up to, I mean, high rising to right. you know, volunteer for a week. Yeah. So then uh, we just, uh, you know, uh, doing a lot of stuff with the high rising, and then they just come up with. Wait so till we many talk about ideas. high rising of the second yes. half. You, uh, you folks out there watching are wondering what is high rising. We'll, we'll we'll tell you all about it in the second half. What's the next one? Let's see the next one. Oh, Michael. There oh, you, you are. Want me to talk? Go ahead, about Michael. Yeah. I think this is a relationship actually that Hero started. Mm -hmm. In the middle, you'll see Wallace Akau of Akau Boards. He works out in Waianae, and he builds the most beautiful. Hardwood cutting. Oh, I saw boards. them in the store. Right, they're yes. in the store, and I, they're expensive, relatively speaking. They're they're not that bad, but they're one of the more expensive things that we have, and they sell like, like hotcakes. You got to come mm -hmm. in and get them. He's got boards of various sizes. At our gala coming up, one of the auction items is literally a molded single chunk of monkey pod turned into a cutting board. It is a one of a kind. I don't even know what it would be worth. I have to tell you, and again, we'll get back to this in the second half, that store mm -hmm. is unbelievable. You, you gave me a tour of the store, mm -hmm. and I just love, so, so much of it is custom-made. 
You know, yeah, it's I, not stuff that you'll find anywhere else. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Now, I'm sorry, but uh, we have to take a quick break and uh, pay for the show somehow. And then we will be back in the second half. My two guests are Michael Moore and Hiro Ito of Kids Hurt to Hawaii, one of the most important organizations you can help by giving them money or your expertise to help young kids. We'll be back in a minute. And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in Uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm so excited about this show today because it's interesting. On last, uh, last week's show uh, with uh, Beth Ann Kozlovich, uh, some people said, you know, uh, that's, a, that's a hard thing to take what's going on with the adolescents and the, and the mental hospital, Kahi Mahala. And today we're talking about the little kids. Mm -hmm. How do we help these little kids uh, that are three years old, four years old, and five years old, and no parents, or parents are in jail, or somebody dies, and who helps them out? This organization, Kids Hurt to Hawaii, is what it's all about. This is the place where 300 families and more, if we can help them, will be able to find a refuge. They'll be able to find a place to, to call home when they need it, to have friends to play with when they need it. So let me get back to the show because I can get on a soapbox and that's not a good idea. Michael Moore, Hirohito, mm -hmm. welcome back to Thank you. Seymour's World. You guys are doing wonderful work and as you could see, I'm very excited about you here. Let's go back to some of our pictures, Robert. Oh, go ahead. This is uh, James Lovery and he's the one with the participant. As a, uh, he grew up and as a uh, for, former foster youth, I mean foster youth, and then he's been coming to our program, I think, about six, seven years already, and took a training, become a facilitator, and part three, a former executive director of mm -hmm. to Hawaii. Next. That's a Likeke. He's a, a, a Likeke and a, a Uchida, Yuko Uchida, and from Japan. And then Likeke was, you know, he was also participating in Kitsa to Hawaii since he's nine after his father died. And he came to our. Uh, uh, um, he was at know, the fundraiser, yeah, he yes, he spoke actually. Right. And also this uh, um, uh, the meeting. And he uh, became a you know, facilitator. He took training, and he's such an amazing young man. And so then, here you have a young man like him mm -hmm. who starts off as a youth mm -hmm. in your in your program, yes. right? Needs help, and mm -hmm. you guys guide him a little bit, and now he's coming back to it's help amazing, out. Amazing, amazing young Fabulous. man. Let's keep going. What's the other photo? This one uh, was uh, when we kind of uh, when we did uh, mm. uh, film shooting for the um, career changers TV. TV. Not yeah. to take anything away from Seymour's yes. world, but we were gifted a spot on on Rich Figuel's show, and all of these folks came in. Hero got on the phone and said, "Hey, can you come in and help us?" Next thing you know, we have all these volunteers to you know uh, these you shoppers and to. But most of them, almost every one of them, has been involved in the program to some degree either as uh, family members being served or as volunteer facilitators. Or former or, foster youth. Or former foster youth, and just people who love the program. It's so. terrific. Now, the next, the next slide is the one that everybody, I've had like three or four phone calls already. What is, what is High Rising? So let's bring up the logo for High Rising, and we'll let you guys talk about it. Hero, you are the one who started this whole thing yes. with uh, High Rising. I remember that first conversation mm -hmm. that you and I had about it, and I said, Hero, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if this thing 
think, but man, have you done a great job with it. So tell us about it. So this is the logo of the kids, uh, High Rising. And then uh, this was uh, designed by the uh, Yusne Makana. He's uh, 19 years old. And he's been coming to Kitsa to Hawaii um, about 10 years. And then uh, when we start talking Patria for my ED, we, she had an idea of the workforce development. And then uh, we needed the logo. We just started doing a, a brainstorming. And then uh, Makana, he's very quiet, but he, st he loves to drawing and stuff. Then he started drawing. And some of these meeting. products yes. are all so about it. Let, that's all his handwriting. Go ahead and we, talk about it here. We really, oh, OK, so this is a cap. But I just want to uh, talk about the logos. And so he just hand draw. Then we mm -hmm. really liked it. And then so we just ask him, you know, uh, get permission from him. Then we send it to the um, uh, graphic designer. And then a graphic designer just, uh, you know, slightly modified it. Then it just become our logo and then become our store name. That's so, Michael, rising. before you came into the organization, you and I and Patria had a conversation mm -hmm. yes, about the right. store. You know, how do you set up a store? How are the kids going to benefit from the store? It's not a matter of making money, but can you train kids to understand retail, purchasing, mm -hmm. inventory management, all these different things? Mm -hmm. And you guys said you could do it. And now there is a store called High Rising. And the store is that? You can tell people. Okay, so store is, uh, we used, used to use uh, the office for the Hawaii Foster Youth Coalition and we use, uh, use uh, drop-in center in a sense. So we've been doing like the past uh, 17 years, 16 years. Then uh, uh, this idea come up. So Patreon and I, then uh, you know, um, the name of logo came up because of the Makana. And then so we started you know, developing um, the curriculum which is Michael can explain. Well, I can speak to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Michael. Well, I, and I tell you the backstory before I even worked for the organization when Patria was working with Hero, and right. they just had like one thing in that whole big remember, open space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She goes, I'm creating a social enterprise workforce development project to train foster youth how to get and keep a good job. And, and I'm like, what are you talking about? The place is empty. What do you mean? She goes, we're going to turn this into a big store. I'm like, oh, OK, let, you know, let's see what and you can do. And the coffee shop, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't even know about that. But <laughs> I've known Patria for a long time, so I didn't mind joking with her. But she did a lot of research. Uh, formerly at Consuelo Foundation, spent a lot of time in the Philippines. So she got to see social enterprise workforce development yes. project, projects operating in the Philippines. And she did her due diligence, brought the concepts back, and then work with Hero, and it was just the two of them, really, mm -hmm. to start putting it together. I came back about a year later, and instead of just one item on the floor, this whole place was filled with counters and, and clothing racks, and the coffee shop was there. And the kids, literally, the youth that were brought in for the first three-month you know, trial period, they uh, distressed the wood, painted, did all this stuff to make it really unique. I mean, you got to come in and see it. You've seen it, but I've everybody it else out there, come in. I told my um, wife I wanted to come because I, I love the uniqueness of the products that are in there. So yeah. the store is located at where? Um, it is at the Kukui Center, 245 North Kukui Street. And our organization address is Suite 203. But if you walk into the first floor of the Kukui Center, and everyone is welcome, um, go straight into the, the door is yellow, right? Yes. But, but uh, it's so typically it's open. You'll see it. It looks like a store. It's like any kind of Waikiki-style boutique you might see anywhere down in that Except area. Except the, the merchandise that you have in there is so individually crafted mm -hmm. by a lot right. of artisans. So it's like going to, to a craft fair somewhere and finding a guy that's made uh, uh, cutting boards, like you were talking right. about, Here's or some of the hats or the clothing. I mean, these items that we're seeing here in front of us, those mm -hmm. are... Those are all custom made just for high rising. And right. I think that's why you're not just getting local people coming in. Tourists are loving it, too. So if you need gifts for Christmas, if you need gifts for birthdays, Correct. whatever it is, this is such a great cause mm -hmm. to go in and buy. Your prices are more than reasonable. I mentioned to you, I think you should hike up your prices to make a higher profit. But for the consumer, mm -hmm. go in there. Go in there and buy a water bottle. Mm -hmm. Go in and buy a hat or a bag or jewelry you have, clothing mm -hmm. that you have in there. It's an absolutely fantastic store. And what I like about it is that you're training kids. You're training these foster kids on how to work. I, I totally skipped that part. Hero turned it over to me to talk about the curriculum. Yeah. And we have to give credit to a mixture of different people, or I'd like to, but the Geist Foundation, I have to admit, they care about foster kids like crazy. 
and they provided the seed money for Patri and Hero to kick this thing off at the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. But they've given us additional funds now to support the development of a really thorough seven component curriculum and we have hired a contracted person to put that together who is now working with our training coordinator to get and parts of it are done parts of it are already in place um, and to make sure that the foster youth don't just come in and walk around and try and sell t-shirts or dresses but they do actually learn marketing computer literacy personal and business finances a mixture of different things and the eighth component of the curriculum is the emotional support that they get from the healing young hearts the the uh, kids or two staff who are working with the kids in, and the youth in the evenings. But if they ever have um, a particular need, like they get upset or angry, which does happen when you live a stressful life, people are there to be able to walk them through it. It is really uh, comprehensive. It is a good place for youth to learn to get a job and keep a job. By the, by the time they're done, uh, they should feel very confident that a, an employer is going to hire them and keep them on board and that they truly have something to offer. I love it. I mean, this is what Kids Hurt 2 is all about. So we've discussed the younger ones. We've discussed the foster mm -hmm. youth, right, who are older mm -hmm. and are starting right. to understand there is a life after school and a life after all the issues that they have. Uh, you and I, Michael, talked about when you and I met the first time about how important it is to get these children, and I use the word children loosely, obviously, because mm -hmm. they, they sure. can span from three years old until 24 years old, yes. right, for some mm -hmm. of the guys that we have in there. Uh, I think it's important for people to understand the assistance they need is not one meeting. No. They, may, they may be there for years. And how do you fund something like that? You don't charge them for this. No, so everything, the there's no money that 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 uh, that you're getting except for donations from either organizations or from people or your own fundraisers. So the support that we need from people on the outside is exactly what we're talking about: helping these kids, helping them, helping you help the kids is the way to make sure that these kids have a normal life. And I think that's fantastic, Michael. Just great. Thanks. I'm I'm so, glad to be a part of it. I really I, am. I, I have to, to say, us. Michael, that first conversation we had, you and I, and the conversation that Hero and I have had over the years, it always comes down to the same thing. We're all doing the same thing. Whether it's my Make Them Smile mm -hmm. program that you know I use for kids in the hospital, what you guys do, all of us are trying to give children a better life. And you are doing such a great job of it. Now, you have one minute left to say the last thing you would like to our audience. The last thing. Um, oh man, there's so many last things that. Oh, no, we, could we only say. have one minute. I'm sorry. But here's what I've been thinking about as yeah. as this um, viewing or uh, filming has gone on, and that is that I really want people to be aware uh, of their own losses in as a means to have empathy and understanding for the families that we work with. We've all lost someone to death or just lost someone. Maybe they were incarcerated or they got deployed. I mean, these little kids are losing their parents for a mixture of reasons. Um, and sometimes they return. Um, and sometimes, a lot of times, the kids, there's thousands of kids that have been pulled from the home mm -hmm. due to abuse or neglect and, and put in foster care. And they may return to their families, which is ideal. But during the time that they're away, that's the part I want everyone in your viewing audience to relate to and realize that these guys, these little kids and these youth, they need support, like, because it's traumatizing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just would ask everyone out there to think about their own losses, decide how can you help Kids Hurt to Hawaii to serve these kids, because we will take any form of help that we can get. Thank you, Michael. Very Thank well you. said, Hero. Thank you, a pleasure to see so both of you again. I, I'm thrilled and honored that you have come onto the show and spread the message out. Uh, for you guys, uh, we will be back on November 2nd. I'm on my way to China, uh, where we're going to be doing a show, hopefully from China, if we can get the government to let us loose over there. But we're going to try to do a Seymour's World from China. Then I will see you on November the 2nd, which is going to be an amazing day. We have a positive, fun, enlightening show. There's music is going to be involved. It should be a, a lot of fun. But I hope you got as much out of this show as I did, because thanks to Kids Hurt Too, we're making a better life for kids today. Aloha from Seymour's World.